Hi everybody, it's Miss Holden here. Um, you might have heard me mention equivalent fractions on other videos to do with fractions, um, but that's what we're going to be learning about today. It is quite tricky, so make sure you are super duper paying attention. And um, we're going to go through lots of different examples. So, what are equivalent fractions? Well, the first thing that you need to know is that equivalent means the same. Okay, so equivalent is something that is the same as something else. So, equivalent fractions are fractions that have different numbers but show the exact same amount. So if we look at this example, all of these fractions are showing the same amount. They are equivalent. So let me show you. So here you go, look, we've got one third here. Oh, that's not gonna work, one second. We've, so we've got one third. So imagine if this was a chocolate bar it's been split into three pieces and we've got one piece, so we've got one third. But if we look at this one here, this rectangle, imagine if you had the same chocolate bar and it's um, instead of three pieces, this time it's been split into six pieces. So you've still got the same size chocolate bar um, apart from this time it's split into more pieces, but if you look really carefully, can you see you've still got the same amount. If you had one piece of the third, that would be the same as having two pieces of six. Can you see, if you look at the diagrams, look at the fractions, the same amount is shaded, yes? Okay. We'll talk about the numbers in a minute because um, you'll see a pattern as we go along. So let's have a look at this piece now, look. This time it's been split into 12 different pieces, but you've still got the same amount shaded in, okay? You've still got that same amount. Can you see? It's exactly the same size as this area and this area that's shaded in. Even though you've got one piece here, two pieces here, and four four little pieces here. If you put all those four little pieces together, that's the same as those two bigger pieces, and it's exactly the same as that one big piece there. Okay, let's talk about the numbers quickly before we move on. So, one third. Do you see a pattern here or anything that you can think is um, what's happening here? Look, we've got one third, and here we've got two sixths, two, two over six. Can you see anything that's happening here? We've got one, two, and then three, six. If you have a look, the numerator doubles. We've got two here, we've got one here. Double one is two. And if you have a look here, we've got a third here. Double three is six. And again, those numbers have doubled for four twelfths down here. Here we've got two over six. Double two is four. The numerator has doubled. Double six is 12, okay? So these are equivalent fractions. If we were going to uh, continue this pattern, Y3, we'd have, um, oh, bear with me. Okay, so the ne so next, if, we, if we're doubling the numerator every time, the 4 would be 8. And can you think what the denominator would be? What's double 12? Be 8 over 24. And imagine it 24 pieces here now. So this big bit would be split into 24 really tiny pieces, but you'd still have the same amount, okay? You'd still have this much. Let's have a look then. Today we're going to be having a look at equivalent fractions to one half. So here you go, we've got some rectangles here, look. This one already has been split into one half, okay? You can see half of it is shaded in. We've only got half of the rectangle, the rest is blank, okay? So, have a think about this question. 
how many quarters would you need to shade in to make an equivalent fraction to one half? So let me get my um, colouring in tool here. Okay, so just have a look. This one's been split into two pieces. This one, this rectangle has been split into four pieces. How would we make an equivalent fraction? What would we need to shade in? Okay, well, I'll show you, look. So, if I just click on one of these pieces, is that the same amount as this? Because here, we've only got one piece shaded in, look. One of the pieces is shaded in. So, if I shade in one, is that the same? Well, no, it's not, is it? Because you can see there's only a small piece here that's shaded in. This is much bigger. So, actually, if you look now... If we ignored this line here and this line here, we'd have exactly the same amount. We'll have exactly the same amount. Let's see if I can... Oh, look, I can drag this over here. Can you see? Can you see, Y3, that this is the same amount? Look, same amount. So, and the fraction would be... So here we've got one half, but this time we've got quarters and we've got two of those quarters. Okay, right, let's talk about the numbers. Let's talk about the numerator and the denominator. Straight away, can you see a pattern? Okay, well done if you're thinking of doubling. Again, look, so here we've got one over two. Here we've got two over four. Four, two over four and actually to find a fraction equivalent to one half all you need to do is have a look at the numerator and denominator of the fraction and if the numerator is half of the denominator then you know that you have found an equivalent fraction to one half okay so let's let's try that and check it works so so here we've got um, this time the same size rectangle look has been split into six pieces. So we've got six equal pieces. Oops, eight. And this one has been split into eight equal pieces. Okay. So if we use that rule look, so we said equivalent fractions to one half, um, the numerator needs to be half the denominator. So what's half of six? Half of 6 is 3. What's half of 8? Half of 8 is 4. Let's check that that definitely works. So we want three pieces shaded in out of the 6. So 1, 2, 3. Can you see, Y3, that that is the exact same size piece? If I drag this one over here, look, it's a half. It's still a half. Even though it's been split into six equal pieces, because we've got three of those six, we could still call that fraction a half. It's the same as a half. It's equivalent to one half, okay? Let's try this one, look. So I'm shading in four because we've got four over eight. Half of 8 is 4. When the numerator is half of the denominator, we've got an equivalent fraction to 1 half. So all of these fractions, these four fractions here, are equivalent to 1 half. These are all showing the same amount, okay? If I reveal this up here, look, this time we've got circles. Just to show you in a different way, look, half of a circle. This time we've got two quarters. Two is half of four, okay? So we've got equivalent to a half, yeah? Three is half of six. We know this is an equivalent fraction to one half. And you can see on the diagram, look, uh, we've got half, yeah? If we ignored these lines here, we'd still have a half. It's the same as a half. This one as well is exactly the same as a half. It's equivalent to a half. Okay, four eighths. Half of um, half of eight is four. Okay, so when the num num blah, blah, blah. when the numerator is half of the denominator, we know that that is an equivalent fraction 
to one half. I'm getting a bit jumbled, aren't I, with my words today? Okay, let's have a look then. So we've got a task here, look. Tick the fractions that are equivalent to one half. You can be thinking in your head or you can pause this, you can get a piece of paper and have a look now, Y3. Uh, before I tick any, I'm just going to have a look and I'm going to fill in the numerator and the denominator. So here we've got a half, one half, look, one over two. Here I've got three over three. Here, oh, I'll have to count these ones. One, two, three, four, five. So I've got five over ten. I've got one, six. I am writing this with the mouse, so I know it's not, it's not very neat, is it? Let's have a look. So here I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six over eight. Ooh, I've got three over six. 3 over 6 again, 3 over 6, I've got 2 over 4, this one is 4 over 8, and then 2 thirds, hope you can read this, why 3, oh this has got loads, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so I've got 8, and it says 8 on that side, I know that there's 8 on the other side, so that will make 16. Okay, right. Uh, okay, so tick the fractions that are equivalent to 1 half. So this one, hey, um, yeah, we know that that is equivalent to 1 half. Look, because it is a half. Okay, 3 over 3. No, it's not, is it? That's equivalent to 1 whole. So that one is not, but it is an equivalent to one whole, okay? But we're looking for the fractions equivalent to one half. Um, yeah, so let's have a look at the next one then. What do you think, Y3? Would you tick it, yes or no? Well done if you're thinking yes, I would tick this one. You could look at the diagram, yeah? Half of it is shaded in. If I spin it around, it looks just like this one look yeah looks just like this one half is shaded in but I don't need to just look at the fraction I could be looking at the numbers um, and here you go look five is half of ten the numerator is half of the denominator so that one definitely needs a tick this one here what do you think tick it or not tick it is one half of six no, it is not. So that one is not an equivalent fraction to one half. Is six half of eight? No, it is not. And actually, you can see more than half is shaded in here. Three over six. Is three half of six? Yes, it is. So that one is an equivalent fraction to one half. This one is exactly the same fraction, look, and it's the same shape, but you can see a bit easier that this one is a half because this one, it's a bit confusing, isn't it, how it's been um, shaded in. So this one's trying to trick you. This one, the exact same fraction, look, 3 over 6, it is the same. It's equivalent to 1 half. 2 quarters, what do you think, Y3, tick or not tick? 2 is half of 4. I can look at the diagram as well. This is an equivalent to 1 half. 2 quarters is equivalent to 1 half. 8 over 16, tick or not? tick definitely tick this yeah you can see on the diagram and half of 16 is eight two thirds what do we think y3 two thirds okay i'm not going to tick this one half of three is not two and if you look if it was going to be half it would have to be about down here somewhere wouldn't it okay it's got a bit extra so it's a bit bigger than one half so i wouldn't tick this one 4 over 8. Half of 8 is 4, definitely. And you can see half of the rectangle is shaded in. So that one is also equivalent to 1 half. Okay, so if I was sharing a pizza with somebody um, and it was split into just um, halves, if I had 1 half, that would be the same as if it was split into eight pieces and I had four of those pieces. 
or if it was split into quarters and I had two of those quarters. All of these are equivalent fractions. Can you think of another equivalent fraction to one half? Let's just do um, three together. So um, we're going to put some numbers at the bottom. So if I put um, if I put uh, six on for the denominator, what would the numerator have to be? Remember, the numerator has to be half of the denominator. What would it be? Y three. Well done. If you were thinking three, what if I put um, eleven for the numerator? So the denominator would have to be double. It would be 22. Okay. If I had 50, the denominator would have to be 100. Okay. So your task today, Y3, is you've got um, all these shapes here with different amounts shaded in. You need to write the letters of the diagrams that show fractions equivalent to one half. If I were you, what I would do to start off with is get a piece of paper, put A, B, C all the way to T and work out the fraction. So for example, 2, this one would be 2 over 4, yeah, because two parts are shaded in, 4 all together. What would this one be? This one would be 1 over 4, okay? And if we just look at A and B, are any of these equivalent to one half? A is equivalent to one half because two is half of four. Okay, so I definitely have A as one of your answers. Would you put B as one of your answers equivalent to one half? Half of four is two, and here we've only got one. So B is not one. So I wouldn't write B on your answers. So go through each of the diagrams, work out the fraction first, have a look at the numbers. Is the numerator half of the denominator? If it is, then that is an equivalent fraction to one half. And you could look at the diagrams as well, but sometimes they might be trying to trick you the way that they are shaded in, okay? Okay, last activity then. Let's have a go at filling in the numerators to make these fractions equivalent to one half. The first one has been done for you. So remember Y3, the numerator needs to be half of the denominator. So if I've got 20 as my denominator, what's my numerator going to be? What's half of 20? Half of 20 is 10. If you want to pause this for just a couple of minutes and have a go at these following ones, do that now. Okay, pause it now and then I'll go through the answers. Okay, so for this one here, if 6 is the denominator, half of 6 is 3. Half of 100 is 50. Half of 18 is 9. Okay. Right, let's have a look at this one down here. Oh, this one, look. This time you have to fill in the denominators. So you're going to have to double the numerator to find the denominator. Okay, because the numerator is half of the denominator. So fill in the denominators to make these fractions equivalent to one half. The first one has been done for you. So we've got 8 over 16. 16 is double 8. So what's double 7? Okay, remember you can pause it here, but I'm about to go through the answers. So pause it, have a go on a piece of paper, and then you can play it and find out the answers. See if you got them correct. Okay, so for this one here, you should have had 14. Double 7 is 14. Double 25, you should have had 50 as the denominator. 220, you should have had 440 as the denominator. And the last one... Double 70, well, if double 7 is 14, double 70, because it's 10 times bigger, is going to be 140. Well done, my three, if you're getting the hang of this. Um, every year, children do find this tricky. So if you have got any questions, please, please, please send me a message. 
Um, don't worry, don't stress yourself out, okay? We are doing equivalent fractions next lesson as well, so hopefully, um, hopefully you'll start to understand it if you find it a bit tricky. Okay, I just wanted to say well done to everybody who is logging on to their online learning on Google Classrooms. We are so, so, so proud of you. You are honestly doing fantastic. You're doing so good. Um, me, Miss Brown, Miss Samson, we're all really, really proud of you. Okay, really happy with you. Keep it up. I know it's a really strange time, but I just wanted to say well done. Okay, so keep it up. Um, and here's a reminder why three remember to log on every day uh, Monday to Friday because the lessons follow on okay so if you miss a maths lesson um, then you're gonna find the next one really tricky or if you miss a literacy you're gonna find the next one a bit trickier okay so please try to log on every single day um, if you for some reason you can't log on one day then um, don't just miss the lesson go back and do that lesson first um, because otherwise you're going to miss you're going to have gaps in your learning uh, and then you might find other lessons a bit tricky okay but well done everybody um, keep it up you're all doing fantastic and I'll see you next time bye